the application for the Pickering Fellowship Program is as follows. Um, all of the material that we ask candidates to submit must be submitted online. That includes um, all of the uploaded material that you're required to submit, as well as your letters of recommendation. Um, let me walk you through each of the components of, of the application. Um, the, we do have a 600 word personal statement where our uh, candidates are given the opportunity to tell our selection panel a little bit about who they are and why it is that they're applying to the Pickering Fellowship Program. What is it about public service, the foreign service, international affairs that really has you interested in applying to the fellowship? What is something unique about your background that you think will really contribute to the mission and goals of not just the Pickering Fellowship Program, but the Foreign Service? Um, so the personal statement is a critical space for you to tell the selection panel a little bit about who you are. There is also a 400-word statement on financial need um, that we ask candidates to complete. This is really an opportunity for you to contextualize what your need for financial assistance is. And the way that I like to think about financial need is uh, thinking about it in terms of, of a, a time frame. What was your uh, family background, perhaps? What was your socioeconomic status going through undergrad um, and what your need looked like then? What is your current need for um, uh, financial assistance? And then what's your future need? for financial assistance for graduate school. Um, there are certainly elements that change and shift depending on where it is that you are. And um, this is really the opportunity for you to give us that nuance. We will ask you for lots of information, uh, data points, if you will, about your financial status that include the student aid report that's generated by the, the FAFSA, um, as well as some information about um, income and loans. But those are only uh, one part of financial need. We know that financial need manifests itself in different ways. So if you were a student that had to work while you were in undergrad and you don't have uh, many loans as a result of that, but you are not expecting to have um, much in terms of support following uh, for graduate school, mention that to us. If there's someone in the family perhaps that um, has had a medical issue or perhaps COVID was uh, particularly uh, challenging for, uh, for you, um, we want to hear, hear those, those, um, those things in the financial needs statement. Uh, so make sure that, you're, uh, that in the financial needs statement you're considering all of the different elements that may not come out immediately from the numbers it is that we're asking you. For. And I'll just jump down straight to the student aid report and mention that the student aid report generated by uh, FAFSA is required, uh, is a required document for our application. So make sure that you're filling that out early. Um, the, the student aid report can often take four to five days to process. So if you have not yet received a 2021-2022 student aid report, do that as soon as possible. Um, don't wait until the last minute for an application deadline to come before uh, uh, submitting that, that information because it is a required component of the application. Um, there is, a, so I'll jump back up to the two letters of recommendation. We also require two letters of recommendation for all candidates. One is a faculty or instructor. This is essentially someone who can speak to who you are in, in the classroom, your potential for success uh, in graduate school. Again, we are uh, paying for, uh, for a two-year master's degree program, so we want to know um, from someone who's seen you in the classroom that you have the potential for success as a graduate student. Um, the second uh, letter of recommendation is that from a community leader. This is someone who can speak to who you are outside of the classroom. Uh, talk about who you are as an emerging professional. Uh, it can be a supervisor from an internship. It can be a, uh, a, a student organization advisor who's seen your community service activity. Make sure that both of them are uh, uh, folks who like you and can say really nice things um, about you and specific things about the work experience um, or the experiences that they've had with you. And I'll mention some points in, in a separate slide about, um, about how to approach recommendations. In addition to the recommendations, we will also require a proof of U.S. citizenship. So this will be a picture of your passport photo page, a copy of your birth certificate, 
or a copy of your certificate of naturalization. I will note here that if your name has changed for whatever reason, whether it's a, a marriage or whether it's a, a name change, make sure that you have the documentation uploaded with your proof of citizenship so that we can see um, the, the name change um, documentation as well. Um, I mentioned the student aid report. Oh, remember, it's mandatory. Um, if you received financial aid as an undergraduate student and you still have access to your financial aid award letter from your last year of undergrad, uh, we would encourage you to upload this. This is not a required document, uh, but if you do have it available, it does help, again, um, contextualize what your need in undergrad uh, was. We do also require transcripts from all colleges and universities that you've attended for where you've received um, more than six credits uh, or the equivalent of more than two classes of, of coursework. Um, so if you have, if you attended a two-year institution then and transferred to a four-year institution, um, the important thing here is to, to make sure that any documentation, any transcripts it is that you're submitting have the grades reflected from that coursework. So if you did transfer and all of your grades transferred to your current institution or your undergraduate institution where you received your BA, um, as long as we can see the grades from those, those uh, classes, that's really what we're looking for here. Um, for your, we do have a space for you to upload your GRE or GMAT scores. This is optional. Um, you do not have to upload it in order to be eligible, um, but you, you can if you'd like to. And then again, just as a reminder, all of the application materials and components must be received by September 22nd. Um, at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the application deadline for the 2022 uh, Pickering Foreign Affairs application is due on September 22nd, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, you can access the, the materials all the way up until the deadline. Um, you do have to submit your application in order for us to submit as final in order for us to uh, consider your application as complete. You can submit as final any time up until the application deadline. You can also edit your application at any time before the deadline. So even though you've submitted as final, maybe you come back and you say, oh, I need to edit this one thing. You can do that. Um, you have, again, up until midnight of the, of the 22nd to do that. Um, you can visit our website, and I would encourage you to. Uh, the pickeringfellowship.org website where we have a whole host of resources, additional resources about crafting a competitive application. We will post our events here. Um, you will also see information about clearances, um, obligations, and benefits uh, laid out pretty uh, in, in great detail on our website. If you do have additional follow-on questions, please feel free to email us at pickeringfellowship at howard.edu and we will get back in touch with you within 48 hours of your question of having received your question. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook um, where we con continually provide updates about the application, tips, uh, provide tips and profiles of our fellows. Um, it is a great place to get to know our, our fellows and their experiences and a little bit more about what you might expect as a, as a Pickering Fellow. Um, thank you again for your interest in the Pickering Fellowship Program and we look forward to receiving your application.